Hello there. Hopefully there's a few people who are now watching or waiting. Just waiting to see if this is going to come online now. Um, if you are watching, I just want to welcome you. We're just going to wait a few minutes for some people to join us. And then we're going to get underway with our first live presentation of Google uh, training from the LAT team. A minute or two, then we're going to get underway. In the meantime, you can just look at me if you want. <laughs> Just so you can prepare yourself, um, there will be some different ways of interacting. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to go to our the chat screen uh, that is should be on the right of what you're watching. There's live chat, um, and you can join in some live chat there. So if you're there, you might just want to say hello and make yourself known. That would be lovely, so we know who's watching. Um, or once I start doing uh, the presentation, there'll be a link and you can ask questions there as well. Or you can ask questions in the live chat. So just give it another minute maybe, and then we'll get underway. Timo is with me. Do you want to say hello, Timo? Hello. <laughs> And Timo's posted a link to the questions actually in the live chat. So if you want to ask any questions, um, you can just click on that link, go to that link, and that's where you can ask some questions. And we'll be able to answer questions as we go or at the end, uh, whichever is most suitable. <clears throat> okay, well, let's start. Um, I just want to thank you for joining us for this first ever live training session for the IT trick team. And so, part of what we're doing is offering live training so that people, more people, can hopefully interact. And equally, because it's done on YouTube through Hangouts on Air, they can then watch it later on. So, so you might be watching live, or you might be watching a recording. Um, so really hoping that we have no technical issues today, and so if we do have anything, do bear with us. So the purpose of today's training session is to do uh, training on creating great presentations in Google Slides. And so we're going to be going through that, um, looking at how to use great, uh, how to use Google Slides, but then how to also just uh, turn it up a notch just to make it look better and more effective when you're presenting. Um, as I said earlier, you can interact with us through the YouTube chat function that should be on the right-hand side of your screen, or there's a link in there, and there'll be a link when I present in a moment, and that will show you uh, where you can ask questions. If you want, you can just put your questions in the live chat, and we'll get around to that. I was going to be monitoring that today for us, so he might interject at time at any point with a timely question, if there is one. Um, and as I said, this is broadcast live, and if there's anything you want to watch later, uh, if you want to re-watch it, if you loved it that much, or if you missed something, you'll be able to watch it again on the YouTube channel. So that's uh, something to look forward to later. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is going to show you a presentation that I've created earlier, a real Blue Peter moment, and then I'm going to walk you through how to create that, or how I created it, uh, using all the different functions in Google Slides. And hopefully it will show you that these things aren't too hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and then create this, show this presentation. So share that. Okay, um, hopefully you can see now at the top of the screen, there's that link as well. If you missed it before, you can uh, go to that link to ask some questions. And this presentation is based on the book, Where the Wild Things Are, and by myself, Daniel Ball. Here's our agenda, what we're going to be looking through. We're going to look at the story, the characters, the book, the movie, 
some student reviews and a student poll. Now, I don't know if you know the story of where the wild things are. It's the story of a little boy called Max who wasn't having a very good day, I think, and was disagreeing with his mother. And so she sent him to bed without any supper. Um, he decided to travel to a faraway land to escape his strict mother. When he got there, he met these wild creatures, but he wasn't afraid of them. In fact, they had lots of fun together. They loved him so much, they even made him their king. He had enough, and he returned home to where he's loved and where his dinner was ready for him. These are some of the characters you might encounter on, in the book. This is Max, who's the main character, and these are some of the wild things. So first of all, there is a book, and this is what we're referring to. And here are some points of the book. I'm not going to bore you reading through all of these points, but just to show you some of these key points from 1963, and it's been a popular book ever since. But it was also made into a movie in 2009 and directed by Spike Yonzi. Interestingly enough, Max Records played the lead character who was also called Max. Don't know if there's a coincidence. It had a good rating on Rotten Tomatoes and made a good uh, hit in the box office. But what we want to know is what some of our students thought. Now, this is one of our students who's called Zachary Ball, who is my son. And so we've asked him what he thought. So that was our student review from Zachary. So you go to the next slide. So year two class said we loved it, which is great to hear. And someone, age six, said it's a great adventure. We even polled our students to say, would you have been scared by the wild things? 15 said yes and 12 said no. Sorry, that's the wrong way around. 12 said yes and 15 said no, in fact. And any questions? So here's a point I could ask you if you've got any questions. I can click on the section that you might have referred to, and then I can go back to my questions page. So I can go to my student review again, if you want to watch that again, and move back to my questions page. Once we're done, we can click, and then go onto our last page, which says goodbye. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this presentation and found it quite uh, striking. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create this from scratch using the different features. So what we're going to do, we're going to start in Google Drive. To create a Google presentation, a Google slide, you click on the new button and go to Google Slides. And here we get our blank presentation. Now, not all of us are designers, not all of us have great design skills. And so one of the great things that Google Slides does, it offers us some different themes that we can choose from. These are preset themes. If we scroll down here, we can see the preset themes. At the bottom as well, there's a button to import a theme, and you can off the internet and then import them through there. Or alternatively, you could create your own theme. Now, we're going to use this theme today called Slate. And we're going to just do some little edits to it in a bit. But we've chosen our theme, then we want to give it a title. So just like with other Google uh, documents, I'm going to, in the top corner, I'm going to create a new file there. So I've done that. And again, as you hopefully know with all Google products on Google Drive, they all, change, they all get saved automatically. And you can see just at the top here, it says all changes saved in the drive. So you never have to worry about saving it. It will just save it automatically 
uh, as you go. The other thing you can see on this page just to begin with is here, click to add speaker notes. So if you're working through, this is where you can add your speaker notes. And what I'll show you later is how to view those notes while you're presenting. So we've done our theme. We can close that down and we're going to begin to create our presentation. So the first thing we're going to do is put in our title where the wild things are. Now, you might have noticed my uh, presentation was a little different to this one. And if you actually want to change the master template of your presentation, you can do that by going under slide and edit master. Now, what I'm going to do for my title, I did want something a little bit different. And I'm going to use a different font called Shadows into Light. Now, with Google uh, Slides, you can have lots of different fonts. Now, there are already some here. If I click on more fonts, I can then go in and choose an array of different fonts. Uh, and so once I find one I like, I could click on it and it adds it to my list. And I click OK. Like I said, we're going to choose this one today, Shadows into the Light. I'm going to make it bold as well. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these little dots because I didn't want those on my presentation. Once I've done that, I'm going to close out. And I've got my title there. So I'm just going to move it to the top of the page, resizing the box a little bit using these brown, uh, blue squares. And I'm also going to make this font a little bit bigger. So let's try 60. That looks perfect. Um, what I'm going to do is then add my name at the bottom. Again, I'm going to move this to the bottom just by dragging it, stretching it out to fill the gap. Now, what I can do with this, I'm going to make it have a white background. And so if you go to the fill button here, you can have it as a white background. And then I'm going to change the text color here to black. Now, both of these boxes as well, they've got different alignments. And things can be aligned to either the top, middle, or the bottom. Now, I want both of these aligned to the middle. So I'm going to select both boxes, do this by holding down the Shift key and selecting both boxes. Then under the Align tool, I can align them to the middle. So we've got a lot of our elements in there. Now, the next thing we want is to insert an image. And we're going to do this from our Google Drive. So if I go to Insert an Image, I can click on Google Drive. Now, mine are in our team drive at the moment, so I'm going to go into there. Just going to find the folder I want. I've got all my images ready for me, which is always very helpful. Just getting there slowly. And here you go. I've even called it cover. Now, I've got this here. So I'm just going to move it onto my slide image. Now, what I want to do, though, is then send that to the back, because at the moment, it's on top of everything else, and I want it at the back. If I right-click on this, there's the Order button option here, and I can click Send to Back. If I just wanted to move it behind one thing, I could do Send Backwards, but I want it behind everything, so I'm going to do Send to Back. Now, what you might have noticed is that this box also then needs coloring in, so I'm going to do this here with some of the theme colors. Something I also did to make this stand out a little bit more was add a line in. Now, if I click here, you can add different types of line. I just want a plain line for now. I'm going to draw my line. While I'm doing that, I'm holding down Shift, and that keeps it straight. So that's my line. I want to color it, so I'm going to color it white. Here we've got some line thickness. I'm going to choose a nice thick line here. You could use different types of line. So dashes or dots, but I'm just going to keep mine as a solid line. So as you can see there, we've started our presentation uh, with a nice cover page. The next thing we need to do is to create a new slide. You can do this by going to Insert and New Slide. As you can see there, there's also a shortcut, which is Control and M. So that's your keyboard shortcut to new slides. We're going to create a new slide, though. Now, for this second slide, I want a slightly different layout. If you if I go back to my original presentation, let's scroll up, we can see the layout is a little different there. Let's go back. Um, if you want to change the layout, you click on this layout button here, and there's a number of different options. I'm going to choose this one. 
what we're going to do is add an image over this. So I don't, don't just want this gray uh, background. I'm going to insert an image. And it's my gender image. So I've got this nice image here. But obviously, it's too big for the area that I want. So I'm going to resize it, first of all, to fill the height of the page. I'm going to move it to where I want it. But obviously, it's hanging over a lot here. Now, if I was presenting, it wouldn't really matter because people wouldn't see this. But just for tidiness sake, I'm now going to crop my image. So if you go to the Crop Image tool, I can then drag that over, and it will crop it. Now, if I'm dragging slowly, hopefully you'll see in one moment there it was a red line. And that means I've reached the edge of the page. So if I release that there, you can see what's been cropped. I click here, and that's reached the edge of the page there. You can those red lines are really helpful for making sure you keep within the boundaries and for aligning things. The next thing I want to do with this is to recolor it. Now, you have an option here. Now, I've got my image selected. I've got image options. And one of the options here is recolor. And I could just click on any of these colors here. I'm going to go for the top one, nice blue. And again, I want to move this to the back. So I'll just use that using the keyboard shortcut, which is the control shift and the down arrow. Now, if I was going to type my agenda here, I could do so. One of the things you can't do with text uh, in text boxes is add a uh, edge around the text. Um, so if I wanted that to make it stand out a bit more, let me just delete those bits. I'm going to do an insert word art. I'm going to put in my agenda. And it gives me a nice, ugly looking piece of text. But what I can do again is change the text. I could make it bold, so just bolding that. I can change the fill color, the outside color. And so there we go, we've got a ni much nicer looking text. And I can use my red lines to make sure it aligns in the middle of the image. So it's a much nicer way of doing it. Now, going back to the original, we've now got some text boxes, uh, sorry, boxes we're going to create there to show our agenda. Let's delete that. What I can do is add a shape. So in the shapes, you get loads of different types of shapes. We can go for a really boring rectangle. I'm going to put that in here. Now, if I type, first page I'm going to do is called the story. I'm going to, again, change the font. The font we're going to be using uh, today is Oswald. If I close down this image option, you'll see more functions become available. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Well, that's a bit big. So again, make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to bold it. I'm going to change the color and change the color of the font just to make it stand out. Now, what I'm going to do is then make some copies. So if I do Control V, I can create create some copies. And I could use the red lines to help me align them. If I imagine I'm going to do six of these, I've just selected all of this. And I'm going to, if I selected all of these by grouping them, I can right click and I can actually align them to the left. If I want to make sure they're all aligned there. And I'm going to distribute them as well vertically. So they're all nicely spaced. So again, you've got a nicer looking slide. So once I've got my slide titles, I'll go back in and rename those. Okay, so we're going to create uh, our next slide. Just getting through my notes. Um, I'm going to go to Control uh, M again to create my new slide. I'm going to change the layout. And this time I want title and body. So we're going to start by this one called the story, just showing the outline of the story. If I go back into my original, I'm going to copy the text. Now, to be honest, a lot of this text I just got from Wikipedia. But if you get it from somewhere, you can then just copy and paste it in. Um, just a little hint for you. If you do Control, uh, Shift, and V, it does a unformatted paste. So the text will just come in in the correct format and not have the pre-selected uh, format. I'm then going to move that across. And I'm going to add an image. Now, the difference this time, I'm going to add an image from the internet. So let's have a little look. If I go back out of this and I go to search, I'm going to search for 
where the wild things are. And I know what I'm looking for if I type in book, and this was the image I selected. Now, the good thing about doing uh, images through this uh, search function is that all of the images that you'll find here are pre-approved that you can use them. They're not copyrighted or anything like that. So it may, means that you are using uh, images that you're permitted to use. Okay, so we're just going to resize this. Again, I'm making it the size of the page. And then I'm just going to crop it a little bit, a bit that way and a bit that way. So again, I need a little bit more crop. And there you go. So you got your slide. Hopefully that's not too hard then. Just so you know, there's a few different sites you can use to get some Im good images. Um, because good images make a real difference in your presentation. Um, the ones I generally use are Google Images, uh, so I can check on the copyright. Um, but two other sites I use are Pixabay and Unsplash. So if you do a search for those, Pixabay and Unsplash, you can join those uh, sites and get some really good quality images. Because having a quality image does really uh, help your presentation to pop. Okay. So we're going to add a new slide. I'm doing my control M. And I'm going to change the layout. I just want a title. And this slide is called the characters. So I'm going to go and insert an image. Again, I'm going to do this from my Google Drive. So go back in here. And we've got this one, characters. Now it's a little bit big, so I'm going to resize it. When you're resizing, if you hold down Shift, it keeps the aspect of your picture the same. If you hold down Shift and Control, you can see there it's hopefully resizing it right around the image, so it's keeping it in the right place. So again, I'm going to use this moving to make sure it's the center of the page. Then I'm going to add a text box. You can do this by clicking on the text box icon at the top there. There, and this is max. So again, by selecting the text or the text box, I can then choose the font I want. I can make it a bit, the text bigger. So I'm gonna actually go something quite big and bold. And I'm gonna make it white. Now what I want to do is use a little arrow so if I go back into shapes, there's an arrows function. I grab my arrow here, and I'm going to point to max. Again, if I want to change the color, so I could change it to a white arrow with a darker edge. I could use that one. I could make the edge a bit thicker, just to make the arrow stand out a bit more. So we've got that. Then if I want to add my arrow, I can copy that. So I'm just going to do control C, control V, and I've copied that. I can rotate this using this little blue circle at the top. So I'm going to rotate it for this creature. I'm going to copy this text as well. Move that over. And this is the wild things. There. Create another arrow. Rotate that a bit more. And using these blue squares to stretch it out. What you will notice with arrows, you've got these other little uh, yellow markers and if you move those along they can change the type of arrow that you're using so we've got our different arrows now what I want to do then is do some animation so what I'm going to do is group these two together I'm doing this by clicking my mouse and selecting the uh, items I want Then if I do a right click I can go to group and that's group those together then I'll go to insert animation And it's already applied the basic animation to it, which is fade in. Now, if we look at the animations here, there aren't that many different animations. Personally, I don't mind that. I think when you're doing good presentations, you don't want too many varying animations. Uh, if you have things flying in left, right, center, and zooming in and out, and spiraling, and all these things, it can just make your, uh, your audience feel a bit seasick, really. So my recommendation is keep your animations to the minimum, 
and uh, where they're most effective and keep them simple. So this one's a fade in. It's done on click and you can change the speed if you want there. Now the next thing I want to do though is animate these as well. Uh, another way of selecting items, if I've selected my text box, I can then hold shift down and select the other items as well. So again, I'm going to right click and group that. And I can click here, add animation as well. So it's clicked the same. If I want to preview my anim animation, I can click the play button and it'll bring up a little preview screen where one click shows that animation and the next one there. And you can follow that with a little red marker along the side. So I click stop, so down that slide. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So the different layout, we're gonna have a title and body slide because we want some text. And this one is called the book. I'm gonna cheat and just go back into my previous presentation and copy this text. I'm gonna do a control, shift and V, so it comes in without any formatting. Again, I'm gonna resize this to about half the size of the screen. Now what I want to do on this is add some bullets. So I can select the text box or the text that I want to add bullets to. Let me close this animations down. And here I've got numbered bullets or circular bullets. And if you do the little drop down, you get extra options. So we're just gonna go for circular bullets. I'm gonna move my text box just so it fits nicely on the page. And then I'm gonna add another image. So I'm add my image. Um, where are we looking for? Just forgot what image we're looking for. That's the book, there it is. And this is a book cover. So it's just inserted that there that I can view. Now one of the things people often want to do with bullets is animate them so they come in one at a time. So again, if I select the text box, go to insert animation, and it's the same kind of process, but what you'll notice is different here is there's a tick box that says by paragraph. If I click on that, that means that when I play this, you can see that they come in one at a time. Okay, let's add our next slide. So this one is the movie. And I can go in and copy the text that I got from here. Resize this, but I'm gonna now add a movie. One of the great things with Google Slides is how it interacts with YouTube. So if I click insert and go to video, I can search for something here. So I can go where the wild things are and click search, just like you would in YouTube. If you already had the URL, you can put it in there as well. Then I'm gonna look through, find the one I want. Here we have the trailer for the film. So I'm gonna put this in here and it comes in nicely. Now, if I have a video, if I right click on the video, I can find video options. This allows me to choose where I want the video to start. So I might say, I want it to start after five seconds so I can miss out the information at the beginning. Uh, on my previous presentation as well, I also had autoplay when presenting so that the moment the slide came on, it played itself. And I muted the audio because actually on this slide, I wanted to talk over the video, not for you to listen to the video. This is a bit different to our next slide though. We're going to here, I'm gonna change the layout. And this was our student review. Now, thankfully I got my son, Zachary, to do this video for us. And I inserted the video. The difference this time, I'm doing it for my Google Drive. Now it brings up my recent videos, if you want to, and I've got this video already there, ready to go in. So it just comes in, again, I might want to resize it a bit. If you ever want a video to play the whole screen, my recommendation is to just drag it, and so it fills the whole screen, move it to the middle, to so you see the red crosshairs, and that will be in the center of the screen. What this means is that it cuts out the little black bits at the top and bottom and people can view it as much as possible. Now for us though, we don't want this. We just want it on the side. There. 
And so this is ready. It's the same video options if I want to, but this one I'm going to click play on when we get to it. I did put in his name. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at, create a new slide. I'm going to change the layout. This one's called Big Number. But these are what I call impact slides because too often we see in presentations people just presenting slides with just lots of information and they just present the slide and just read off the slide. Now, the truth is you're better off just putting the slide off and up and telling people to read it if that's all you're going to do. Um, but you're better off having a slide that says something and then you can talk around it. So for us, we had a quote, for example, we loved it. But then I changed the font. It was year two class. So that was their impression. So when I present this, it's very bold. It says exactly what it is. It doesn't tell you too much, but then I can talk around the point. Another way of getting this to stand out, I used in the other presentation was to add an image behind it. So again, I'm going to insert an image. Just wait for that to come in. I'm going to move that to the back. Send to the back. But what I want to do, obviously, it doesn't the text doesn't stand out very well against this image. So if I go into my image options, I could recolor it. Brilliant. What I can then do is use my adjustments. So maybe some transparency. I can adjust the brightness a bit darker, just so the text can stand out better against the background. Okay. Going to add another now. Next slide. What we're going to do is work out how to connect now with Google Sheets. Now I'm going to change my layout. Um, and the question we asked: Would the monsters, uh, oh, sorry, the wild things, scare you? Um, now what I'm going to do is then insert a chart. You can create a chart from scratch, but if you've already created it in Google Sheets, you can click from Sheets. Then you get a list of all your different uh, sheets. Here's my one that I'm connecting with. I select the chart I want. Now here's an important little button. It says link to spreadsheet. What this means is that if you then update your spreadsheet behind the scenes, it will also update it in your presentation. So if I want that linked, I leave that ticked. I click import. And just so you know, I resize this in the Google Sheet so that it's the size I wanted in my presentation. So it comes in there, and that's linked. Just close this down. Okay, we're going to our next slide, and this was our question slide. Um, what I'm going to do, though, I'm going to go back to my agenda slide, because I liked that one, and it's got all the information I need. So imagine I uh, had gone through, so oh, I misnamed one. So imagine we've named all these correctly. What I want to do is select this slide. I'm going to copy it so I can copy, right click, copy, move down to the bottom, place my cursor there, right click, paste, and it's brought this in. So this is an agenda slide, but I don't want these items. And I want to reapply the, lay the layout because I'm going to say any questions. What I also did was add an image. So if I delete that, I'm going to copy this image because I just used uh, this image, pasted it in, cropped it. Just again, adding the image just makes it a little bit more interesting. Using the red lines to keep it all aligned. Now what I can do, and I showed you before, is I created these as links. So if I select a box, you've got a little link icon there. And then I can, I can put in a link to a website if I wanted to. But the way I used it was slides in the presentation. So I'm going to click on the story and click apply. So that means that when I present, if I click on that box, it will then link it back to that uh, page, that slide. The other thing I did um, using this kind of uh, function is to create something where on each slide, I could then return to this question slide. I did this. If I go back onto this slide here, I created a shape, and this was just a box in the corner. 
up in the top corner and I made it transparent and transparent line so you can't see it Let's close this down but I added a link to the slides scrolling down to my any questions applied that and then copy and pasted it onto each of the slides so it shouldn't interfere and you'll be able to when you're presenting it means that at any time you could then click in the right hand corner and return to your questions which is a great way of navigating and not having to flick through all your slides just to get back to something okay the last thing i had was kind of a goodbye page so i'm going to create a new page there's a blank page i'm going to insert my image because one of the things you have to think about is how you finish now at the end of all my presentations normally i'll show a how to connect with us in other ways page um but we don't need it for this so i'm just gonna do a goodbye slide i'm gonna crop off the text the bit i don't need move it around resize it and i'm gonna add a call out now if you click on the shapes go to call out you can then draw in here and i can just type directly into the call out folded that i used our font i made it central aligned and a little bit bigger i think yeah we went up to 60 excellent so again i can change the font color if i want and i'm animated this as well so i inserted an animation and it faded in but the difference i did this time i did after previous which basically means that um, the previous animation after the previous animation this will happen in this case it's when the slide opens so I've added that I made it a little bit slower just for effect okay so that is how we created this slideshow a couple of other things to be aware of though um, one of the things I added was slide transitions so if I click on slide I can click on change transition and the one I used was cube. There's a few different ones there. I can select that and then I can select apply to all slides. So that will do it for every slide in my slide deck. The next thing I'm gonna think about is actually then presenting. I've got my wonderful presentation. If I just click on present like this, it will just present it to the screen like that. Now, if I click on the little down arrow after this, I can actually use this presenter view. That means it will present but i also get this box and this is what i was using for my uh, previous presentation now this has audience tools and if i click start new on my audience tools this is where it puts that link at the, at the top of the page where people are able to ask questions and i'll find out soon if any of you have asked any questions um, we're also able to click here speaker notes so if i go to my slide one this is where I added my notes. And so if you're presenting, you can be viewing this. You can click on the next slides whilst viewing your notes as you talk. So you can see what's coming next, what's gone before. You can jump around to different slides if you like to as well. So that's um, the presenter view. So just being aware of that. Got all those. So that is pretty much all we're going to show you today. So we're going to just... Ask Timo if there are any questions. Not at the moment. So either that means you've all fallen asleep or uh, I've answered them all already. Um, what I want to make you aware of, though, if I flick to another, this is the follow-up slide that I mentioned before, that we do have the IT Trainer website. Um, if you're on the Trust Portal, you can go to that. Um, we also have a YouTube channel that has over 100 training videos. So you can go to the YouTube channel. This video will appear on that as well. And we really encourage you to go there and subscribe. Um, or there is the Google Plus uh, site. And so you can go and follow me on the LAT IT Trainer as well. So that remains for me to just to thank you for coming. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's been uh, helpful. And so, as I said before, this video will be up on our website on the YouTube channel if you want to re-watch any parts of it again. But otherwise, we'll leave you there and do contact us if there's anything else uh, 
you want to see or any have any help with anything else. So have a great day. That's goodbye from me.